Um, I just want to go through this again, though, just to remind you guys, because number 5 through 10, you guys are given these double angles. So I want you to apply the double angle formula. So therefore, this is 2 sine of x cosine of x equals sine of x. Then what I started off in last class period, yes? Equals 2 sine of x. Wait, so that was it? Really? OK, yeah, you're right. All right. So and then I used my double angle formula, which is 2 sine cosine. Now, to solve this, I got to separate. I got to get these to the same side. So therefore, I have 2 sine of x cosine of x minus 2 sine of x equals 0. Can you please put that away? Now, the next thing that I can do, the next thing I can do, you guys can see, is they both share a sine of x, or 2 sine of x, so I can factor out a 2 sine of x. By doing that, I get cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now, what I can do is apply the zero product property. So you could say 2 sine of x equals 0, and cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Were they asking you to find all the answers between 0 to pi, I believe? So to solve for sine of x, I get sine of x equals 0. And then over here, I get cosine of x equals 1. So basically what they're asking is between the values of 0 and 2 pi, when is sine of x equal to 0 and cosine of x equal to negative 1? Well, if you look at your unit circle, cosine of equal to 1. Cosine is only going to be equal to 1 here, right? Because over here, it's negative 1. And for these two angles, it's 0. And when is sine of x equal to 0? Well, sine is equal to 0 here and here. So if your angles have to be between 0 and 2 pi, that means 0 is included, but 2 pi is not. So therefore, my answers is cosine is equal to 1 at 0 or the angle 2 pi. But, so 0 is going to be only 1 included. And then sine is equal to, sine is, I'm sorry, cosine is 1 at 0. Uh, sine is 0 at the angle 0 and pi. Well, we already have pi, or 0, so we're just going to include pi. And that's your answer. Done.